When you go to the Waterstones website and type in Rebecca Yaros, you find all of these books. But the one that caught my eye was The Last Letter, a military romance about a guy who goes and helps a family in need and then falls in love along the way. I don't know, I just think it's going to be really bad. That'll be funny for me. I suppose it's about time we roll the intro. So Rebecca Yaros is the author of the breakout book of the year, Fourth Wing, which is literally everywhere on the internet. At this point, you can't even avoid it. But today we're going to be talking about one of her backlist titles. Now, when I was doing a little bit of background research for this video, I found out that the inspiration for this book is probably Rebecca's own life because, yes, she is a military wife. I also stumbled across this article, I will try and cut to pictures as I go through this video, where um, she's talking about the fact that her husband is not going to be re-enlisting into the military. Oh my goodness, she's got like six kids. Rebecca Yaros's husband was apparently in the military for like 22 years. Okay, well that explains the pretense for this book. Now onto the thoughts while reading segment. The thing I've noticed about Rebecca Yaros's books is that they all read like debuts, which is not a problem if it's your first book, but at this point she has written like 15 books or something ridiculous. And each one has insanely amateurist writing, which I'm sure it makes for a fairly easy read, but it's just not the sort of thing that I think constitutes good writing. So the two love interests are called Ella and Beckett Gentry. Gentry is in a fleet of soldiers. Right down to his core, he is forced into this job. So he comes home from the military after the death of Ella's brother, this is all pretty much outlined to you in the synopsis, it's not a spoiler. And uh, he's there to essentially care for Ella and her daughter who has stage 4 cancer. Apparently he needs to know this Ella. Y you've never met her, Sonny. Ella's children, of which she has two, both speak like teenagers, which is the first red flag. Rebecca really loves turning random words into swears. There's the F word, family, and the C word, cancer. So our two main characters have been communicating through letters. Let me stress, they have never met. And yet old military man round here thinks he's fallen in love with Ella and he doesn't get attached. This is giving war where they let all of their soldiers die before they even enter the battlefield. Oh wait, she's already written that. Don't mind me, just on the hunt for more plot holes. To find lots of plot holes. Chemical penguin. Beckett is described as man candy. I mean, I don't know about you, but I am picturing sound patch kids. I've never even eaten them, but that's what I'm seeing. Holy crap, he looks sincere. I'm sure anyone whose brother died and whose daughter has stage four cancer wouldn't receive an ounce of sympathy. No, absolutely not. Ella's two children are called Maisie and Cult. Yeah, you know exactly what I was thinking. I love that Cult, short for Colton, which is really no better, is the one slandering Beckett's dog's name, which I've forgotten. Beckett has a real problem about cursing. Apparently it's a sign of low vocabulary and he believes that words are powerful and stuff. Well, I guess I got that A star in English lit GCSE for nothing then. I like green. Green was an awesome color. Green, green, green. Why on earth have I read the word green so much? The Colleen Hoover girlies would eat this stuff up. And they clearly do. The situation with uh, paying for healthcare in the United States is pretty much spelled out to you, but that doesn't take any gravity away from the situation. I mean, I live in the UK, which compared to that system is very privileged because our health system is funded by taxes. And despite all the threats, we still don't have to fork out 
thousands and thousands of pounds just to live. I really wish everyone had that system in their own countries. I mean, it's a horrendous situation to be in where your children could get treated for something, but you can't afford the treatment. Honestly, no words for that. Mr. Beckett Gentry, military man, asks Ella to marry him literally 200 pages into the book. I understand it's for insurance purposes, but who does this man think he is? For a man who allegedly doesn't get attached, he sure thinks that women literally drop to his feet, doesn't he? Ella apparently loves this man, although she doesn't think he wants her after he's literally said it? Or at the very least, heavily implied. I don't want to get sued by Rebecca here. Let me just read you some of these quotes because they are... <sighs> questionable until I became nothing but need. How do you become need? I'd love to know, truly, like he was the only man I was created for. We're delving into fated mates territory. And I don't like it. Are Rebecca Yaros and Sarah J Mass friends or something? Honestly, this book has been a real learning experience for me. For example, apparently there are at least 41 places in the world called Dover because they mentioned a place called Dover in the book and that sure as heck wasn't going to be the Dover that I visited in the UK. Of course Beckett bought the land that Ella sold off so she could continue running her business because these two are meant to be together. And that's the end of the thoughts while reading segment. <laughs> well, I'm giving this book two stars and I've almost forgotten this book, but at the time when I'd first finished it, I really regretted reading it at all. Let me tell you why. First major thing is that the third act conflict is the stupidest thing I think I've ever read in one of these types of books. And okay, I haven't read many because I hate romance. To my core, I am a hater of this genre, right? I even made a video where I tried to like it and I didn't even find a book higher than 3.5 stars. So I think that tells you all you need to know about my taste in this genre. I don't like any of it. Okay, for some reason, Military Man doesn't tell Ella that he was the one corresponding to her with all these letters, right? And apparently this is so he doesn't hurt her? And then they break up. Despite all of the good things he's done, he literally had her best interests at heart and yet they still break up? Mm, no. No, 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 no. And also up until this point, this book has been you know, really, really sad. You think that Ella's daughter is literally gonna die and she's already been through it enough, but no, the ending exists. Unfortunately, I looked at the reviews before I got to the end and some little hornet on the story graph, yes, you are being exposed by name because it's just, it's just evil behavior and I'm calling you out for your evilness. They spoiled the ending for me and it was the ending that made me genuinely wish that I had not read this book and that I could have my memory wiped because that would make me feel so much better. Because it's been a week now I kind of just have blocked this book out of my memory. It's kind of like I didn't even read it. I literally only remember what I'm telling you because I made notes. My biggest problem with the ending is that it is done only for shock value. There is no reason it needs to end like this besides to make people cry because if you make someone cry at a book they are i can't think of the word maybe maybe beckett is right maybe i do have a shockingly bad vocabulary if you make someone cry at a book it's more likely that they are going to give it a high rating because they had such a dramatic reaction to that book that's the reason why this book has a high average rating because otherwise it's not a good book it's just really really mid like fourth wing it is mid, in my opinion. Of course, this is all very much my opinion, which is subjective, and uh, apparently I'm in the minority. I don't mind if you give a book a really shocking ending if it feels right. This one, I saw through Rebecca, I read her mind, 
and uh, um, no, Rebecca, Rebecca, no. I honestly wish I had filmed this right after I finished it because I would have more to say. I don't really have a lot to say other than it was kind of trash. Well, anyway, I included as many swear words as possible in my story graph review just to spite Beckett and probably Rebecca too. Oh wait, I didn't realise I was writing poetry in this video as well. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this rant. I'm now going to work myself to the bone trying to get this up on time. I don't know, I like challenges apparently. But yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you've read this book or any Rebecca Yaros, let me know what you thought. Are you a fan? Are you a hater? Are you one of those people that thinks she's very mare like me? I want to know. But otherwise, I really hope you have enjoyed this video. Hope you have a great day. And I also hope I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye. I don't think I'll ever practice my first thing. <laughs>